Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over another high output monster here from Thru Night. Today we have the TN35 on deck for review. But before we get into the details of it, like always, we're going to jump right into a beam comparison because that's what I know most of you guys want to see and that's what I want to see when I watch light reviews. So we'll compare it to the TN30 which is uh, known as sort of like the king of uh, flood output if you will from the Thru Night line. And we'll also compare it to the uh, Streamlight ProTac HL which is a 630 lumen output tactical light. So without further ado, let's step outside and take a look. Here we have the output from the Streamlight ProTac. You can see there, nice good hot spot, decent flood as well. It's a very good, very high output light. And here you see the 35. You can see it just dwarfs it in terms of output. I mean even the, the spills greater and the hot spot is just much, much brighter. That, that shack right there is about 20 meters away in that corner out there, right where those fences meet, it's about 35 meters away. It's really not throwing, showing, I should say, the ability of this light to throw. It is a thrower for sure. And here we have the TN30 that we've reviewed previously, and you guys saw inside, as you can see, a nice wide beam versus the 35, a little bit better hot spot, and also a different tint, as you guys can see there. So that'll be a 35 over here on your right. 30 over here on your left. And here's the 30. And there's the 35. Those beam shots that you guys saw, they really just don't do this light justice. I mean, you'd have to be out in a field of a gigantic like farming field or something like that to really show what this light can do. Um, Through Night says the beam will go out to 500 meters, and honestly, I have no doubt about that because I've tested that before with the uh, TN32, and it easily does that. So these output on these lights is pretty similar in terms of uh, throw. This one here just obviously being a little bit floodier. One of the reasons it's floodier is that it has the MTG2 emitter that you can see down there. It's that yellow thing right in the middle uh, versus say on the 32 which we have here. This is our 32. It has the uh, XML2 U2 emitter. Um, very uh, throwy emitter, very well known for that, and obviously the light really is kind of the standard for uh, throw, if you will, in the industry at this price point. Um, and the TN35 is sort of the balance of the two. And that's due to the combination of the emitter here, the MTG2 that I just talked about, combined with a very deep, smooth reflector. So the emitter here on, on the 35 is kind of more of a, a floody emitter, but when you pair it up with the deep uh, reflector that you see here on the 35, it adds a good bit of throw to it as well. Um, as you can see here on the lens, we have our standard uh, anti-glare coating, so not a lot of glare out of there. When you turn it on, it does have the kind of laid bezel, so that way you can see the light on the outside of it. Speaking of, it is tail cap, uh, it does have the clicky tail cap, I should say, so it has momentary on, just holding it, or if you click it, it stays on. Operation after that is standard in the TN series, so you can go all the way over to low, which is a firefly mode. It's 0.3 lumens, all the way up to when you set it on max right here. It's putting out 2,750 lumens and a peak candela of 66,940. Very, very impressive numbers for sure. You can actually feel kind of like the heat coming off the light because it is that hot. And it is um, protected. It does have a heat protector in there, so that way if it gets too hot, it will step down a bit um, to a level below what you see here. But it takes a while for that to happen. I haven't actually measured the time that it takes, but it does take a little while. So you're going to get that output for a good bit of time. Speaking of the ability to handle heat here, one thing I want to point out is unlike on the TN32 where you see this uh, chrome wind portion right here, you don't have that over here, it's just aluminum. And the reason is, on your 32, see if I can take this apart here on camera, we have the brass heat sink to handle the heat. Whereas, since the, uh, since the uh, M2G2 emitter isn't being pushed as hard on the 35 over here as it is, on the uh, 32, you don't, the emitter I should say, isn't being pushed as hard. You don't need that uh, copper heat sink or brass heat sink that we have in our 32, and we just can go with the standard aluminum one here on the 35. Since I started taking the light apart, I figured we'll continue with that here. Uh, you'll notice up front here we have square cut threads as well as the O ring. The threads there do come lubricated from the factory, both up to here towards the head as well as here on the rear, you'll note that there is also an O-ring on the rear. When you get it in, you get a spare O-ring, you get the nice through night case, and you also get a flashlight holster for those of you guys that want to belt carry this uh, this light. It is powered by three 18650 batteries that you see here. These are uh, lithium ion rechargeable batteries, and it does not come with the batteries though, but it does, uh, it does take very standard batteries that you see here. A lot of folks are out there already have. It does have reverse polarity protection on there, so if you put your batteries in there wrong, 
you're not going to fry your light, so you don't have to worry about that. I believe many of us who are flashaholics, if you will, have done that at least once in our uh, in our lifetime. Some other things that have stayed the same from the previous models of the TN30, 31, and 32. By the way, I have no idea where the 33 and 34 went. Who knows? But um, it does have the aluminum 6061 T6 uh, Type 3 hard anodized body, very corrosion resistant, durable stuff. Um, it also has good knurling on the body so you can get a good positive grip whether you're in the rain or uh, you're sweaty or whatever the case may be. The tail cap here is still tail cap standable and does have your little lanyard loops here so you want to put a lanyard in there. And uh, the output still has the uh, mode where you can go from high which is what we have it at here. Put it on standby if you don't want to use the tail cap and then you can go over to your uh, variable output strobe which is uh, quite disorienting should you point it at someone. I think I hit all the major points there, um, no doubt about it, a great output from this light, very well built and robust just like you'd expect from through night. For those of you guys that have watched my previous reviews, I've beat on these lights a good bit and uh, I'm not going to do it to this one because I've kind of proven that they're pretty tough and waterproof and all that jazz. Um, but it has a great output, no getting around it. Um, when I I uh, was actually shooting those beam shots earlier in the video, right after the camera went off, my neighbor, whose house is in the direction that uh, the lights were shining, came out on his porch and said, what the hell, man, did you turn the sun on? <laughs> so, they're extremely bright. He said he was sitting there watching TV, and it looked like his entire backyard just lit up. So, um, no doubt about it, the lights have some serious output, more than you can actually see on camera with the camera settings. So, that's about it, guys. This light comes to market. I believe it's priced right around $170. You can get it through ThruNight's through website as well as on their Amazon store. I'll put links in the video description below. But uh, no doubt about it, if you're like a, somebody who works on the search and rescue team, maybe law enforcement, and you need some serious output, this is the light you should take a look at. If you guys uh, have any questions about this light or anything else I talk about here on the channel, you can always post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And hope to see you in the next video.